This video will instruct you on the use of the Solar Power Purchase Agreement Calculator. A Solar Power Purchase Agreement, also known as a PPA, is an agreement between a solar provider and a power purchaser. This typically means that a solar developer will design, seek permits, and install a solar system onto the power purchaser's property, either on a rooftop or ground mounted. The power generated from this system is then sold from the developer to the customer per the PPA. Many organizations seek a PPA for their solar system to avoid the upfront capital costs of installing a system and to be able to take advantage of federal tax credits in the case of tax exempt entities. This calculator was developed by the Great Plains Institute in partnership with the State of Minnesota Department of Administration's Office of Enterprise Sustainability and the Minnesota Clean Energy Resource Teams. The calculator seeks to make an apples to apples comparison among a variety of PPA proposals. In its current form, our hope is that it can be used to better understand the financial aspects of different solar installation proposals by accounting for external factors and those unique to each proposal. This video will walk through the solar PPA calculator and explain each aspect and how you might use the calculator. The solar PPA calculator is an Excel spreadsheet. It can compare proposals for PPAs in the Excel Energy Territory in Minnesota. It has many tabs, the first of which is entitled Summary, followed by eight tabs with site-specific information, and two tabs on demand charges. More on that later. To use the calculator, you should begin in the first tab entitled Summary, which provides an overview of the costs and savings from each proposal. In the Summary page, you will find instructions to use the calculator in the instruction box. This box lays out the steps to follow if you are entering information from proposals into a blank PPA calculator. Essentially, you will fill in your assumptions in box one, proposal specific information in box two, and then you will enter monthly consumption data for each site into the demand charge calculation sheet here. To begin, box one is where you will input the overall assumptions for all of the proposals that you wish to compare. The first box is the utility escalation rate. This is an estimated escalation rate of the cost of electricity over the course of the PPA. We came to the value of 2.57% with assistance from an applied economist from the University of Minnesota who looked at the escalation rate of electricity over past time periods. This number is quite conservative. It is often more around 3 to 3.5%. You are welcome to adjust this escalation rate as you see appropriate. The next box is the discount rate. The discount rate allows us to compare prices in future years to today's dollars. You can think of it as reverse inflation. The most important thing about this rate is that it is consistent within and across proposals. So you may adjust this as you see fit in consultation with your organization's finance team. The next box is the solar capacity credit. The solar capacity credit is provided by Excel Energy to solar energy producers with systems over 40 kilowatt in size. The credit essentially accounts for the value of distributed solar generation at times when solar production is strong and the grid can use it between the hours of 1 and 7 p.m. The credit is seven cents applied to 48% of your production. For the purpose of this calculator, that is translated to around three and a half cents per kilowatt hour. As of November, 2018, this rate is guaranteed for the first six years of your system's production. That said, the Public Utilities Commission is currently reviewing a proposal for a new rate that could cut the credit to about half the rate that exists today. We foresee some sort of capacity credit existing after six years. However, this calculator only includes the credit for the first six years, and then it will go to zero. 
If you would like a less conservative estimate, you may adjust how long you foresee the capacity credit will be in effect in each site's specific sheet. Here is an example. The next box is the solar rewards credit. The solar rewards credit is provided to systems sized under 40 kW by Xcel Energy. This rate is 8 cents per kilowatt hour for the first 10 years of production. This rate is not under negotiation. The next box is the system degradation factor. The system degradation factor accounts for the fact that solar systems, like many other technologies, lose some efficiency slowly over time. The industry standard degradation rate is a half a percent of production lost per year, which is what we use here. The last box in box number one is the demand charge reduction estimation. This calculation is meant to give you an idea of the range of potential savings based on the demand charge reduction estimation here. Electricity customers are charged a demand charge each month for the 15 minute increment when they consume the most electricity. Solar systems can lessen these demand charges since your system will likely be producing electricity at the same time of your highest electricity usage, meaning that your demand charge will likely be less. To calculate the estimated reduction, we used a methodology from the National Renewable Energy Laboratory, which is a leading expert on solar energy. The article with that methodology is linked here, if you would like to explore more. The methodology looks at your building's monthly consumption data, runs 100 simulations, and fits a curve for your expected energy use using a national data set of office building data. While your organization's site's electricity use might not match that of an average office building, this demand reduction is simply an estimate. To turn the demand charge reduction estimation on, simply select yes from the drop box below and the values will automatically calculate. To turn it off, select no from this drop box. If you would like to dive into the math, feel free to explore the demand charge calculations and demand reduction curves pages of this spreadsheet. Box number two is where you will input proposal-specific information for the proposals that you wish to compare. The first box is the electricity rate schedule. This box gives the calculator information about the electricity rate your building currently pays without solar. Each building in Excel territory is under a rate schedule. The most common rates for government buildings are general service, peak controlled, which indicates that your building is able to stop using electricity if called upon by Excel, and small general service. The rate for a particular site is listed on the electric bill for that site. The rate calculations used in the calculator are from Excel's public filings. You can select the electricity rate schedule that your building is on, and the calculator's numbers will adjust accordingly. The next box is the system size. This is where you will enter in the system size for each proposal in kilowatts. In this example, the first site is 29.97 kW, meaning it will be eligible for solar rewards, while the other two sites are over 40 kW, meaning that they will qualify for the solar capacity credit. The next box is the expected year one production. This is where you will enter in the proposed system's expected production for the first year in kilowatt hours. The next box is the PPA starting rate. This is where you will enter in the PPA starting rate for each proposal in dollars per kilowatt hour produced. This is the rate at which you will buy electricity produced by the system from the developer. The next box is the PPA rate escalation. This is where you will enter in the proposal PPA rate escalator. This is the rate at which the PPA price in dollars per kilowatt hour produced by the system will increase each year. For the solar possible proposals, the PPA rates are average to quite low compared to national trends. The next box 
is the estimated demand charge reduction percentage. These boxes automatically calculate given the information that you have already inputted. This provides the average annual percentage reduction in demand charges that the calculator has estimated due to this proposal on a specific site. We expect that this will be somewhere between 7 and 15 percent. Again, it is important to keep in mind that this is an estimate based on the National Renewable Energy Labs methodology, but it is impossible to say with complete confidence what the demand charge reduction will be. The next box is the PPA term. This is the amount of time that you will be in a power purchase agreement with the developer. At the end of this term, the host organization and developer or financier will take whatever action is described in the PPA contract. Normally, either the developer will remove the system or the ownership of the system will shift from the developer to the host organization. The last box in box number two is the production guarantee. The production guarantee indicates the amount of energy that the solar developer is guaranteeing that the system will produce of the estimated year's consumption. The next box is box number three. This box will show you the expected average monthly costs or savings in net present value given the information provided above. The box shows five year increments. If we see costs as opposed to savings, we typically see them starting in year seven after the solar capacity credit ceases to apply. Costs will show up in the calculator as red colored text. Again, we know that after year seven, the rate will not be zero, but we are being conservative in our estimation. All of these values will auto calculate based on the information that you have provided in the other portions of the PPA calculator. The last box is box number four. This box shows the cumulative savings or costs for each proposal in net present cost. Again, this is broken down by five-year increments, and similarly, we see costs in red colored text. The last piece of this summary page is a graph showing the annual expected savings as a result of each proposal. To explore the details of each proposal's financial calculations, take a look at the other pages of the spreadsheet entitled Site 1, Site 2, etc., or the site-specific names. These pages automatically calculate costs and savings step-by-step based on the inputs in box number one and box number two. In conclusion, we hope this calculator can be used to better understand the financial aspects of different solar installation proposals by accounting for external factors and those unique to each proposal. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to reach out to us. Thank you.